Unfortunately, Tazar has been put on the live server. And that's his auto attack build. So, we're gonna pick up the auto attack talent at level 1. Resonance beam charge is 50% faster. After it's been channeled fully charged for 80 seconds, it's bounced to one additional target for 50% of the damage. After it's been charged for 160 seconds, it bounces to two additional targets for 50% of the damage. Now our trait is Resonance Beam. It's a charged basic attack. It slows for 10% while you're attacking and you gain 25% mana and a basic attack damage increase and that increases by 25% every second up until you're at 100 which is full charge and that lasts for up to 6 seconds after you stop basic attacking. Now this <laughs> this build is, is difficult for me to play because it requires you to stay still a lot. Now when you're standing still on Tassadar, you're getting hit and Tassadar is very squishy. As you guys are probably aware, they changed his abilities. His Q is now static, not static, shock ray. Every time I try to explain, <laughs> shock ray is a straight line scan channeled skill shot. And it will be interrupted if you are stunned or CC'd and wherever the beam is, it will stop. Our W is Psionic Storm. You throw it down, it's an AoE. Stays on the ground for three seconds. Does damage every half a second while there's an enemy in the range of it. And the damage increases by 20% for every consecutive hit an enemy takes up to 100%. Our E is now Force Wall. After a half a second delay, a force wall appears and it blocks enemies for, I believe, two seconds. So what I try to do is basic attack at all times if possible. We're going to be increasing our range later in the game. And we're going to be picking up Oracle, which used to be his trait. But the talent's actually different than the Oracle that we used to have. And I'll talk more about that when we get there. I see Valera, she's actually very irritating because she can silence you for 20 years. Uh, oh, she hit me with the silence before. I got the ability off at level four. We're gonna go for Plasma Shield. Now, whenever our Resonance Beam is at full charge, we will gain 3% of our maximum health as a shield up to 15%. And that will be our new, that's our new plasma shield. You have to have your beam charged up and it's up to 15% of your maximum health. It says while it's fully charged, gain a shield equal to 3% of your maximum health every second up to 15%. I knew there was something I was missing there. It's every second and increases by 3%. So we are at 55 out of the 160 that we need. Once we get to 80, our basic attack will bounce to one additional target. So, if you're actually auto-attacking a hero, it will do 100% damage, right? But if you happen to be attacking something else, it will bounce to a hero, but remember, it's only 50% of the damage, so you want to try to get your main target to be a hero to get maximum damage out on them. So whoever's low, say you have a ton of enemy heroes in front of you, pick the lowest target if possible. That way, they're taking the most damage, and whoever else is getting hit is taking 50% of your basic attack damage. Again, when you have full charge, your damage is actually being increased by 100%. Also, I didn't mention this, but when you have full charge on your Resonance Beam, you are also gaining 3 mana every second. So it's really good keeping your mana up that way. We do need to rotate. Actually, they probably have that under control. At level 7, we're going to go for beam alignment. I know that might seem strange because there's an actual resonance beam talent here, but beam alignment will actually increase your basic attack range by 1 while you have your resonance beam fully charged, and it refreshes the cooldown of your shock ray by 100% while your beam is at full charge. Um, I don't actually want to push that far forward because I don't really have an escape. Also, I know I didn't mention this yet, the towers, the structures actually got a rework as well. They will now focus you if you hit an enemy hero while they're under their structure. Cannons will reduce your armor by 5. 
Forts and keeps will reduce your armor by 10. You can have your armor reduced up to negative 40. The basic, not the basic attack, the structures attacks no longer slow you. They are also beams, so you can tell who they're hitting easier. And the cores now have special abilities and they're real scary. <laughs> so fighting under enemy buildings isn't a good idea. But remember, you can also try to bait them into fighting you under your structures, and they will be taking a significant amount of damage. Even if there's minions under the structures, if somebody hits you while you're under a structure, they will be focused. I believe you can reset the focus by walking out of range, or if you die, it resets, and then they'll target something else. I'm dead. One thing that I'm really bad with is using the force walls. <laughs> I've never been one to pick up force wall, and the delay on it seems to be fairly significant versus the old first force wall. Because sometimes I'll throw it down and somebody will have walked past that spot <laughs> before it actually forms. I will try to use that more though. It is actually very helpful if you can use it in the right situations. So we are at 137 charge on our level 1 quest, so pretty soon here our attacks will be bouncing to two additional targets instead of one. At level 10 I picked up Archon because Archon gives you a 40% shield, so 40% of your, wow, 40% of your maximum health when you pop it. It also lowers enemy spell armor by 20 for 2 seconds. It makes your basic attack splash. And while you have Archon active, which it, it lasts for 12 seconds, your Resonance Beam is always at full charge. So you're always going to have bouncing attacks, which you would anyway with Archon. And you're going to be recharging your Shock Ray while you have that active as well. We are doing really bad at getting into these objectives. We don't have a tank. We have a support. Hmm. We're probably going to be struggling this game for a little while. We might be able to uh, do more when we get some of our other abilities. I think I used that force wall too early because she wasn't actually trying to run, but that's okay. We picked up the kill. Now I will say that I like the Q build a lot better. Even like the hybrid build where you get additional range on your Psy Storm and all that. I like range on Tastar now because he's really squishy. Okay, they got him. They did decide to keep the experience globes in the game, so that is now a permanent part unless they change it later. You do still get periodic XP bonuses from defeating structures, so that's always good. I actually seem to struggle with keeping this beam at full charge. You can see when it's at full charge because it says right here, 100. That level 1 talent we picked up, I believe, allows the resonance beam to recharge 50% faster as well. You can also tell when it's at 100% because the animation on the beam does change. You get an additional uh, psionic like stream around the initial initial beam excuse me i got distracted because people were pinging i guess we're not going to push with the boss there's a camp pushing our top lane it looks like medivh is going up there to clear there are no camps on the map other than the siege camp down there i was gonna help him clear but now the team is pinging that they want the camp i feel like we're not really working as a team very well here at level 13 i'm gonna go for oracle what this does is give you spell armor when you are stationary, 30 spell armor when you're sta stationary, and you actually heal, but the, the problem is you can't move. Uh, it's Oracle, but unlike the old Oracle, you actually have to channel it, and I'm not a big fan of that, but it can be used on the whole map. So it's a global, but you do have to stand still while you use it. I really hope they change that to be an instant like around him like it was before, but I don't really think that's gonna happen. So this build <laughs> requires you to stand still quite a bit. I'm trying to go where the team is, but we're splitting 
a lot and I feel like that's gonna be a problem. We might be able to get this quickly. So the spell armor you get from your oracle uh, lasts for 0.75 seconds. Oh, he interrupted my force wall with that stupid fear. Got him. I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna try to channel this, but I'm very squishy. Oh, Medivh's here to help. Okay, how are they doing on the bottom? Okay, they still got some shots left, so I'm gonna try to rotate. Um, we might try to clear this a little bit along the way. We are two levels ahead, so that's going to help us out quite a bit. By the time I get there, it's going to be done, right? So I'm just going to start this camp. I try to position so that I can actually hit both of these siege giants with my shock ray. Just to get extra damage. So since we have to actually stand still because his basic attack is a channel, that's another reason why I picked up Oracle. Plus it gives you a little bit of survivability because you get a small heal. Now I'm going to pick up, what is it, Exe Executor's Will. I hope I read that right. And what this does is it gives you full charge on your resonance beam when you pop it and I believe it gives you 15% spell power as well. And your basic ability cooldowns and your heroic recharge, fi not 15, 25% faster while you have full charge. What? Man, that earthquake is annoying. Oh, I didn't mean to attack the wall. I am trying to keep- Oh, we ran out of stuff to hit. I was about to say, I'm trying to keep the uh, charge up on my resonance beam, but I think I popped the talent we just took there a little too early because I wasn't in range to actually hit them. I also wonder if picking up induction at level 4 would be better. Should we try to get this siege camp? I feel like this is not a safe idea. Plus, Zagara has creep right here. And I didn't even hit it with my side storm. We can Oracle here. I do think we'll probably win this game and hopefully I didn't just jinx it saying that. I don't really want to be here by myself, but Medivh is here to help. These guys aren't actually standing close enough together for my basic attacks to bounce, which is a little unfortunate. Ooh, hello. Am I supposed to run? Uh, but I don't- I don't want to. I gotta be careful. I think we got the last shot, so I'm just gonna back up. Cause I know Valera's there. She is, Gul'dan, Zagara, and Valera. I guess we're gonna tap here. Do they got this one too? Uh, that's still got a lot of shots left. I think it's just Gul'dan up here. It looks like Valera was in the middle lane, probably trying to get into Zebo. The core is actually taking shots. Unfortunately, well, we might win, but I really wanted to see what the core ability was. Oh, never mind. We're not done yet. Not quite yet. Now, I find that I don't actually want to clear lanes that fast. I know that's going to sound really strange, but if you're clearing really fast, then you don't have stuff to attack to keep your charge up. Now, I was talking to somebody in the chat before the game, and they said that it's actually not that difficult to keep the charge up, so I might 
just be struggling with that. I don't know if it's necessary to pick up the Executor's Will and Archon because they both give you full resonance beam charge, so I'm a little... Let's just say that that's a test thing. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I guess it depends on how good you are at keeping your charge up. At level 20, I'm gonna go for Kala's Gift. What this does is give us 4% spell power for every ally we have within this radius. They will also get spell power. We can have up to 20%. So we get a 4% increase for every person in the range here. I picked that up. Because uh, the upgrade on Archon will actually make it last longer, but you will actually lose your chance to use the 40% shield if your Archon never wears out. Also, I didn't come up with this myself. I was watching somebody else's YouTube and they actually mentioned that. I just want to make that clear. Which I thought was really clever. Wonder if we can just like kill the core right now. Mmm, <laughs> maybe not. Oh, it's tornadoes. Okay. Whoa, whoa, that's a lot of tornadoes. I thought it'd be like one. GG! Oh, that's why nobody was talking. <laughs> we won! I like the tornado ability, that was pretty cool. MVP. All right, so I wanna look at the actual board here to see how much damage I did. Let's see, whoo, that's really low. I kinda wanted there to be another Tazdar so I could actually show comparisons here, but I guess not. Anyways. This is the build I took if you guys want to check it out. And as always, if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye!